Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. It's Meek again. OMG. I've just been traveling for like three and a half, no, three hours and 45 minutes. Just arrived in Johannesburg. We're now in the hotel. I'm sorry, I'm filming from my phone because obviously I won't have like my ring light and stuff while I'm here. Um, so sometimes I'll film from my phone. It's really early in the morning. It's like 7.20. Um, we're absolutely exhausted, but um, we're going to have breakfast now and then wait for the room to get ready. So this is the beginning of my weekly Johannesburg vlog that hopefully will not have tea being poured into mugs. Um, hopefully it's going to be fun. So I really hope that you like, yeah, this video. Um, please consider fully subscribing, hit, hitting notifications. It's been a while since I've traveled. I'm very excited. And yeah, I can't wait to show you what you can expect from this trip so it'll be like a weekly vlog i hope that someone is still watching by this point so i'll see you guys in a bit good morning everybody um it is sunday we are heading to breakfast um and then we're going to go to this place called maboneng i just wanted to show you what i was wearing i'm wearing this like pink um like sweatshirt that i got from zara I'm also wearing these jeans also got these sunglasses i picked them up at a local shop i just wanted to show you that from a local shop in tanzania but i just love the pink lens i'm sorry i can't use my camera and stuff because like the lighting is so bad um so i just wanted to quickly show you so forgive my phone i'm sorry it doesn't look perfect but um yeah i just wanted to quickly show you so normally um we would normally go to church and stuff on sunday but we decided we'll go to church at our local church back home next to weekend obviously we'll be back in tanzania so we've decided we're going to go obviously to maboneng i'll tell you about maboneng later and also we're going to go to the apartheid museum today um if it's open and we're going to go to this place called gold reef city so i totally forgot to show you guys the balcony can you hear the birds chirping this is the balcony of the Maslows. We have our own private balcony. It's the room that we got. You guys, you know Investec, that's a really famous like um, investment company. That's their, I think that's their like African headquarters is there. Um, yeah, so this is the beautiful balcony. Just quickly show you. I love this hotel so much. Um, it's been a great stay so far. There are little teething problems. But I think that's because like, the world is coming out of the pandemic um and you're not supposed to say the, the p word but i just said it oh well i hope good, like youtube doesn't shout at me but yeah it's absolutely beautiful here and this is our very beautiful balcony and that's how it looks i just wanted to quickly show you guys okay now we're going to breakfast so yeah see you guys um later so now we went to um, Maboneng, which is this really interesting part of the Johannesburg CBD. So um, essentially, we went there. We've been there many years ago, um, so you should be seeing footage by now because obviously I'm doing this voiceover. And um, it was previously like like a it was like a part of Johannesburg's um, CBD that had been run down and they, there wasn't like a lot of investment and then things changed and the government decided to essentially like invest i think there were also some i think there was like a property developer as well who came up also with the idea to basically regenerate a um, maboneng so there are a lot of these really edgy cool shops a lot of really cool like boutiques um and there are lots of like restaurants started by south african entrepreneurs and you can go there and take pictures I feel like this is a fresh look into um, Johannesburg that's like beyond Santon, which is where um, we stay normally when we come to Joburg. So, yeah, I just wanted to show you um, what Maboneng um, looked like and the things that we got up to that day. Um, I'm not sure if you're going to see it yet or if you've already seen it, but we went into a few shops. So I'll put in some footage of that as well. We had a uh, like some drinks as well. I had a cosmopolitan at this bar. There's a really nice woman at this bar called Pata Pata. Um, and she like helped us get an Uber because we wanted to go somewhere else. So we were like, oh, we need to get an Uber because we have to go um you know to the apartheid museum so she was really helpful and she like helped us get one because like we didn't have internet it was quite stressful that day but anyway 
We had a great day in Mabonang. Okay guys, so here at the um, Apartheid Museum, um, I think by now you should have finished seeing my voiceovers um, of Mabonang. So I think I should have explained that it's like an area that was in the CBD that has been regenerated. So now we're here at the Apartheid Museum. Um, so we're going to go have a look around and then try and go to Gold Reef City, although apparently you need to book online So I don't know if they're going to let us in to the theme park. So we're just going to have to go see about that. So yeah um, Let's go inside the Apartheid Museum and see what is going on there. Inside the Apartheid Museum It was very poignant. You're not allowed to film um, inside the Nelson Mandela exhibition but it was really, really poignant to see like the entrance um, that is actually segre segregated by race. So there's a white only entrance and a non-white um, entrance and you're given your ticket that tells you if you're white or, or non-white. It was really, really, really poignant um, to be at the Apartheid Museum. Um, and we'd always come to Johannesburg for many years. You know, Edwin and I, we've been together for nine years now. And we've never been to the Apartheid Museum. So we said this time we're going to correct that. I'm so glad that we went. We were both really moved um, by the entire exhibit. I would absolutely recommend that you go, but just be ready. It's very emotional. South Africa is truly resilient um, to have you know, really just like grown and flourished since the end of apartheid. So apartheid ran from 1948 until about the sort of, let's say like early 90s, because Nelson Mandela became the first democratically elected um, president of South Africa in 1994. Ironically, actually on my birthday on the 27th of April, that was the day that the election was held. Um, so yeah, absolutely recommend going here. It's very, very, very poignant and it really makes you think. And um, I just love that we got to hear about Nelson Mandela. We also got to hear about his family and also Archbishop Desmond Tutu, the role that the church has played in the freedom movement. It's absolutely amazing. Okay, so tell me about your day. What did you think of the Apartheid Museum? Hi everyone, welcome <laughs> to my wife's YouTube account. Follow us and click subscribe. Yeah, he just laughs all the time whenever I'm like, guys, click now, subscribe. Okay, okay. what do you think of the Apartheid Museum? Yeah, so Apartheid Museum uh, has a lot of uh, historic memory, especially like how they fight from the mining time up to the, you know, uh, for them to get the union. Uh, with yeah. Mandela and each and everyone. So many so, people. So many people. Not just I, I think him. it's even me, I got a lot of inspirations, you know. So I think it's something which, when you get time, you need to come yeah. down here and look into it. It was so inspiring seeing Mandela's car. Why don't you tell them about the Mandela thing? Yeah, yeah. so Mandela, like after, you know, he get out of the prison, uh, the Mercedes, uh, together with the team, they actually give him a Mercedes Benz S Class 500, which is really inspirational. I think I'm going to get one. Okay, I think I'm getting one. You can buy me one. <laughs> you can buy me one. It was red, wasn't it? It was red. Yeah. Really nice. So, like, they wanted to make him one, like, to thank him for his services of freedom fight it was really beautiful and i think he drove it didn't he like he drove yeah. it and everything okay so now we're in gold, gold reef city which i told you guys before it used to be a, a gold mine this was in a like a former gold mine so yeah we're gonna go on a bunch of rides and we'll talk to you guys later bye we just got off this uh right here if you can see it um with the sunlight and <laughs> we were both talking about how it's like a scam it's like a, it's like a scam, isn't it? Is it a scam? Uh, it's a scam. It's just like uh, three seconds done. <laughs> it's not even that. It's like even from the launch, even from the acceleration. Remember? Mm -hmm. it's, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's fun, but it's really cool. It's called the Golden Loop. If you're um, going to come here, um, it's called the Golden Loop. Sorry, um, but yeah, it was fun. So now. We're just wrapping up, I think. We weren't able to go on that many rides because there are just so many people here today. I was actually shocked. I thought Sunday would have like less people, but there were like tons of people. It's absolutely rammed. Um, that's, what I was, that's what I was always telling you guys, you know, about the African market for basically anything. This is a theme park for crying out loud. Um, you can hear, you can hear me. Oh my God! <laughs> Okay, you guys are actually going to 
ready to go. On a helicopter ride, you can hear the chopper there. We just made it's going to be proper fun. Make sure you keep watching. Fully subscribe. Hit notifications. <laughs> was one of the most fun things that I have ever done with Edwin. It was so much fun. I would recommend if you are going to Johannesburg, it's um, the helicopter company is basically available at the theme park, which is called Gold Reef City. Well, the theme park complex and the price was 800 Rand. Um, and it was like a two minute <laughs> trip though, to be fair. It's very, very short, but you get to go to the Johannesburg CBD and you get to see all of the skyscrapers and they're absolutely stunning to see. It was so fun. I even sent it to my mum and mum was like, how much is that when I go to South Africa? I want to go on it as well. So it was 800 Rand per person. Um, you can just check the conversion, but that should be about, I'm trying to think how much that is. I think that's just under... Maybe it's just under $50, give or take, but it was so much fun. I absolutely recommend you do it as well. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday morning. Um, I'm sorry, I forgot to vlog yesterday. I was like doing Instagram stories. Um, I'm sorry, the lighting is so bad. Um, I don't have my ring light. I'm trying to focus and look into the lens, but it's hard work. I think I'm a sit down video gal, but I'm powering through. So today, Edwin is um, going to go do some of his own bits and bobs. I am going to go try and buy wigs um, at this like wig shop, but I'm not going to vlog that because it's not going to be possible. Uh, I don't know. We'll chat about that later. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to go back to Sandton City, so I'll vlog that as well. So yeah, I'll see you guys a little bit later. Good morning, everybody. I'm standing outside the hotel. It's actually really cold i'm trying to look into the lens um i don't know how people do vlogging as a job because i even forgot to vlog yesterday i was just doing like instagram story videos if only on instagram you saw those um and now it's tuesday and then i realized i don't have any proper footage from monday so i decided to scrap in so i'm going to get a shuttle there's like a free shuttle bus going to santon city so i'm waiting for that um i can see it goes like every 30 minutes so if you come to stay at the Maslow although there are some changes they've made to the hotel um before they used to be able to like take you to different locations with like the hotel taxi but now it seems like they don't do that anymore which is a bit of a shame because that was like one of the draws of this hotel was that they had this like really cool hotel ta taxi service and it would wait for you so let's say you wanted to go somewhere that isn't like a shopping center or something you would go and then the hotel taxi would wait for you but i just asked for that service and they said it doesn't like happen anymore so that was disappointing because I wanted to go to this wig shop and the wig shop isn't in, the wig shop is not in Santan. It's not in like, it's not in like a super glossy neighborhood, if you know what I mean. Um, and I wanted them to wait for me. So I'm going to go and get a taxi from the Santan City um, shopping like um, rank, basically. I'm going to get a taxi there, then I head to the wig shop. And then once I'm done, I'll go back to Santan City um and i think i was gonna go to the mall of africa but edwin's going to gone to do other things today and he was like no let's go to that together let's see the day is organic and <laughs> the day is fluid so we'll see um i think i had told you guys in my stories but yeah it was just it's just too hard to film a luxury shopping vlog but i will have a Sor Swarovski, I'm struggling to even speak today. I will have a Swarovski unboxing that I think you'll see on the weekend because I think this video will be uploaded on Thursday. Um, so by the time you see this, I will be back in Tanzania. Anyway, I've done my best <laughs> to film a vlog. Let me show you. This is, this, it's really sunny today. I'm sorry, but this is the hotel. Oh, I can see it really like this. Slower. Yeah, so I like this hotel. And it's still one of my favorite hotels in um, Johannesburg, but it has changed. And I think that has been a bit of a like change for me. Like it used to be, it's been a little bit more relaxed. It's a little bit more strict now. Like, you know, she was like, no, it can only go three kilometers. It's like big H, you know, like FSH or whatever. So um, that's a little bit um, annoying because I really wanted them to wait for me um, because that's what I had preferred because the location is going to be a bit tricky, but I'll make it work. Um, so yeah, um, I hope that you guys have been enjoying this vlog um, and make sure that you're fully subscribed to my channel. By the way, if you're watching this, um, Chanel have either increased prices in euros or they're about to. Um, so make sure that you 
yeah, have all the information, but presumably you have like already sorted yourself out because it will be Thursday. So it's actually, it's either happened by the time this video is live or it's uh, like going to happen as well. It's quite chilly today. I don't know why I'm wearing this. It's quite chilly. Um, let's see if this like hotel laundry service works because I put some clothes for laundry. So I want to see if they work as well. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'll see you guys later. I'm going to see if I can execute this wig thing. Um, wig thing. I like that. I'm going to see if I can make it work. And then if so, cool. I'm not going to film that, I don't think, because it's not luxury and I don't feel like anyone really cares to see me like picking out wigs. But once I get back to Santa City, um, I will film. Like, I think I told you guys before, but someone got told off <laughs> for filming at Santa City. Someone actually got told off. I was like, why are they telling off people? Um, so they're quite strict and a few years ago at Santa City they were not this strict like they weren't strict about filming and stuff but I did film a little bit in Swarovski but it's not enough for a vlog um, it's not enough for a vlog okay yeah okay so heading in now um, so I'll talk to you guys later hey you guys so I'm back in Santa City shopping centre um, I went to the wig shop the wig shop is in a really far part of town so I had to go with this like taxi driver who had to take me there and I was like oh you wait for me and he was like yeah I have to wait for you because I want to make sure that you're okay because like the wig shop is in a part of town that's like you know um not not super glossy not particularly high-end everyone's staring at me by the way because I'm vlogging um so yeah he then took me back to the hotel I got my weaves not wigs technically they didn't have lace wigs in there I'm sorry about the lighting so bad today with lighting um they didn't have um my lace wigs in there they didn't have tapings they used to and i asked them i was like what happened like why don't you have like american style weaves and wigs anymore and he was like oh you know just don't bring them in anymore um they're like really expensive i was like okay so i got um weaves and extensions um so i'm happy about that and now i'm back here at santon city so you dropped me back to the hotel put the weaves, weaves and extensions down um and now yeah i'm back here at santon city i was just in zara zara is here my god i mean i just can't believe it last time i was here was like two years ago it was just before c19 i just can't believe okay i've got a nice little area here let me stand um, so people stop staring because when you talk into the camera like this people look you like you're crazy <laughs> sometimes I just tell people like I'm on the phone or whatever um, so yeah um, now I'm back here I'm just going to have a look around no real pressure one of you was telling me like don't worry it doesn't have to be luxury show us everything we want to see like the way people on the African continent shop um, I think that's actually really cool um, to show you guys like a lot of things um, it, you can't really vlog like YouTube style in, in Zara but I did I do a TikTok you should see the TikTok by now if you go follow my TikTok page so yeah just take it easy this is a holiday it's not meant to be stressful um, I think like I said before early on in the day I just can't believe that people who do this as like a job because this is hard work I don't have my ring light I don't have a stand you look crazy standing like this <laughs> talking into the camera you look absolutely insane I think I'm just gonna look around beauty products and just see what's popping oh Chanel Beauty's down there might go have a look at that I've already shown you um, I think if you followed my Instagram stories we've seen what I saw at Gucci and Versace I already posted that and I posted that on my Instagram feed so go look at that because I told you guys that I decided not to vlog in those stores because it's just so stressful seeing people getting told off for vlogging really kind of puts things in perspective it was much easier to vlog in Paris than it is here because absolutely rammed with security here like security is everywhere and it's it's good it makes you feel safe you don't feel like you know anyone's gonna come and nick your stuff because it literally absolutely rams security guards and if you look at them for a little bit like if you look at them like this they're like hello madam can i help you are you okay Do, like are you lost you want to go to a certain store should i tell you where it is like there's a lot of security here um oh look it's h and m i don't know if you can see it it's h and m oh, might go in there later do love me some h and m um, ooh, maybe I should just walk around talking and then you guys can see the shops. By the way, there's Karl Lagerfeld. There's like a Karl Lagerfeld shop here. I know that even by the time he passed on, he didn't own the shop, but there is one. Anyway, um, I just wanted to update you guys. I'm so sorry about the lighting. I, it can't be helped. There's spotlights everywhere here. 
this is like a YouTuber's worst nightmare is the lighting in here in addition to looking crazy um, by talking into the camera but whatever I just don't even care anymore I'm gonna do what I have to do I said I was going to produce a channel's my vlog and hopefully I have done it oh there's Chanel Beauty Ooh, who's going into Chanel Beauty I am see you later okay so I'm attempting to talk into the camera I hope that you guys can all hear me I just ordered a coke as usual um, so it's e the evening now early on in the day I'm trying to look into the lens early on in the day you saw me at um, Santa City I was shopping went to do a beauty Chanel Beauty went to Zara H&M went to Pandora Pandora's here as well Thomas Savo watches there's so many brands here Edwin went horseback riding, so he's really exhausted, so he had dinner another time, I had, I'm going to have dinner now, um, there's so much walking here, so I was like, oh, I'm going to go to the gym, but literally, I'm literally walking and walking and walking every single day, I think I've walked so many kilometers just around the shopping center, because it's absolutely gigantic, um, so yeah, um, tell me how this vlog is going, it's not tea being poured into mugs because you didn't see the waitress or the um, coat for me. And then they give you this like huge scroll, which I think is hysterical and the glass is like that big. Um, so yeah, I'd love to know what you guys think about these vlogs. I'm sorry about the quality of the camera. It can't be helped because I can't walk around with a ring light and look like a crazy vlogger. There's so many vloggers here and there's so many travel vloggers. You can always tell who the travel vloggers are because they look so obvious because they have like gimbals and and stands and they're like doing things with scripts. I saw tons of influencers and vloggers in Sandton City today. Um, when Edwin came back from horseback riding, I was telling him, he's like, are you, are you guys not like so like embarrassed? Like the fact that you're just like so obviously talking to the camera looking insane. And I was like, we do look absolutely barking mad, but it can't be helped because you want to create content for your audience. So I hope you guys have been liking it. Um, people are walking about, but no one seems to care that I'm talking into the phone, so whatever. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys have liked it. I really like the food here, by the way. It's called the Lacuna Bistro for anyone who um, is coming to Johannesburg. I really like the food here. He liked it too. Um, it's actually not that expensive either, and we just charge it to the room. And then my husband will, my darling husband will settle it. You remember early on in the video, he said he's buying himself a Benz. So I was like, excuse me. Ah! let me stop you right there honey okay i'm gonna need that fence first i saw a rolls royce today a wraith so beautiful so a santa city saw ferrari california now i'm like maybe i should get one of those but i i want to get a lamborghini so i need to focus on those kind of bigger luxury goals like my lamborghini and audemars let me focus on that um and edwin can go get his Benz. that's cool but let me focus on those bigger goals and by Benz, he doesn't mean a g-wagon he means like a vintage style one anywho i hope that you guys are enjoying this tomorrow's wednesday i don't know what we're doing tomorrow but i'm guessing going shopping again because it's a shopping holiday at the end of the day um but i think we're going to go to the mall of africa we'll see how things are and then on thursday we're heading back to tz i really hope that this vlog is decent i hope you guys are enjoying it if you're not a member of my facebook group please correct that and go join and yeah follow me on tiktok and everything else and i'll see you guys tomorrow so good night good morning everybody um it is wednesday morning we've just finished having breakfast it's about i think it's about 10 20 in the morning i'm sitting on the balcony we have our own balcony here you can just see um this hotel the maslow definitely is like more of like a brutalist kind of architecture like the architecture is like i think what would be considered brutalist but inside it does look quite nice um so yeah um we're about to go to santon city again <laughs> okay i'm sorry my hair doesn't look super glamorous because we just got back from breakfast but i'll brush my hair and i'll look much more presentable later on in the vlog i just want to quickly come on camera um and tell you guys yeah what we're doing today which is really not any different from what i did yesterday we're going back to the shopping center but yesterday edwin went um horseback riding um he, and yeah he went horseback riding which was outside of johannesburg um but i opted to just you know stay close to the hotel and go um weave slash wig shopping and then go to um santa city obviously you saw that portion of the vlog um so we're heading back to santa city our, our like trips to johannesburg are always like shopping holidays but buying anything and everything it doesn't have to be expensive or high-end um there's zara here there's h&m here they're like so many 
things. Um, oh, I can put my elbow here. Oh, that's good. Okay. There's just so many things that we can like buy. I'm sorry about the lighting. Um, oh, that, that lighting is a bit better. Okay. So yeah, so we're going to be heading there and that's pretty much it. Um, I think we're just doing a whole shopping day today. So I'll, I'll show you where we end up. Um, I'll just show you anything and any, everything. If I think it's interesting, I will show you, but that's pretty much what we're doing today. Tomorrow we're leaving. We're going back to Tanzania in the, at night, I think. Um, so you'll see this vlog tomorrow, God willing. Um, but I will be in the air, so it won't be a premiere. I think, I think it'd just be like a normal video. But yeah, we've been having such a great time. I just wanted to quickly just show you again here, Sanson. Look at that. It's just so busy. This is like the financial district of Johannesburg. And look at that. I mean, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Like, I just love it. And it's so busy. Like, people are, because obviously it's like 10, 20 in the morning. People are going to work. People are, you know, doing whatever it is that they need to do. Everyone's busy. There's, there's a buzz here. Like... There's a buzz here for those of you who care about that kind of thing. Um, sorry about my messy bun, but th there's a buzz and a vibe here. You know, it's very energetic and I can just see like everyone driving over there, going to work and going to do whatever it is that they need to go and do. There's an energy here. It's just really, really great. And it's a lot of fun. Um, this is so different to my lifestyle. Oh, there's a McDonald's over there. Um, this is so different to my lifestyle um, in Tanzania. Tanzania is much more like Tanzania slash Dar es Salaam is much more like a slower pace of life. Um, it's very much a slow burn, and that's not a bad thing. Um, it's just super interesting. Just that here, you know, here it's just so vibrant. It is so look at the sky, it's so beautiful. Um, so yeah, and TZ is also vibrant as well. They're, they're both great. They're just so different, and I think it's just like kind of understanding how different like both countries are in both cities like Johannesburg and Dar but they're both great great cities and honestly like I was telling my husband I was like you know we hadn't been back here in like two years <laughs> do you know what I mean and we hadn't been back here in two years and um all I can think about is when I'm coming back here but obviously I've done this Johannesburg trip so my next trips obviously is to go to Paris but I think I'll be coming back here again <laughs> before going to Paris I think I'm going to come back here again we'll see because it's just so convenient I think that's something which we'll chat about once I get back to Dar like shopping for anything here whether it's like Zara H&M like Swarovski or Louis Vuitton or Gucci or whatever it's so much more convenient here because I just jump on a plane that's three three hours and 45 minutes and I'm here and I don't have to have a visa I don't have to go through all of that stress I can't tell you like what how that like is so positive like for me and um that is definitely, I've definitely, I have a lot of changed feelings, particularly when it pertains to um, luxury shopping, um, like you know, sh shopping in general. Like why go, why struggle and try and like get visas and you have to get a visa and like the visa prices can take ages, particularly if you're trying to go to Europe um, or the US and stuff can take a while. Um, and it's just great. Like, it's all here. So I'll be back here soon. <laughs> um, and when I come back, I'll let you know. Because I've just had such a great um, holiday. Um, and I, I love the idea of just, like, working really hard at home in CZ and then just coming and spending money here. I feel like that's fun. But anywho, this trip has been so much fun. So once we're done here, I think we're just, like, my husband's just finish, finishing up some errands. Um and then we'll head to Santon City, um, and then we'll see what the what the day shows us. So I really hope you've been enjoying this vlog. Uh, please consider securing on and subscribing. This is me being authentic. Like I could have been like, let me go do my hair, do my makeup um, after breakfast, but I will do my hair and makeup before we leave the hotel, and then I'll talk to you guys um, once we're like leaving the hotel. But yeah, make sure you keep watching and yeah just keep watching because there's much more to come today hey guys so here at nelson mandela square um we're walking through this like walkway that connects with santon city shopping center it's very busy you can see it says nelson mandela square there very busy today um so yeah just wanted to show you 
all of this. We have a busy day here at the shopping center. I'll update you as the day goes on. I think I've already shown you those wax figures on my Instagram stories, if you follow me on there. Um, I guess I'll chat to you a little bit later. We'll do a voiceover and show you more of the shopping center. Okay, I don't know if you can see Starbucks there in the backgrounds. There's so many American brands here now. The Starbucks, Steve Madden, Coach. Um, um, yeah, it's just so busy here. I just can't even believe it. So I've just done shopping. I went to Aldo. I went to Dior Beauty and I also went to um, Mac, although in Mac just now, they're quite, they're not particularly friendly, um, to be honest with you. I'm trying to look into the lens, sorry. They're not particularly friendly. At Dior Beauty, they were much more friendly. That's the makeup I'm wearing right now, is everything was from Dior Beauty there. They're not friendly in Mac, which is kind of like, whatever girl. Um, and I bought a foundation. You'll see that in my get ready with me because I did also want to use uh, this trip to get makeup that I can't easily get um, in Tanzania, even though we do have a Mac store in TZ, it never has my color, which is NW46 in Studio Fix. So what I did when I went to Dior today, oh my God, look, this Krispy Kreme. I'm f I'm, I was about to swear, I'm effing gagging, okay? I will come back there later. <laughs> uh, my husband doesn't like donuts, but then when I get them, he's like, oh, you didn't get me any? I'm like, okay, but you said you didn't like donuts. So what have I learned from this shopping trip? I've learned that there's so much for me to learn as an African like luxury consumer. I have a lot to learn as well. The market has changed so much and there is so much demand for luxury. Um, I've learned a lot in the past few days. I've learned that Dior Chanel, if they come here, they will be horrifically successful if they open a fashion boutique here. Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Cartier, Bulgari, Versace, they cannot meet, the, they just can't even meet demand, they're queues. I posted them in the Facebook group, a few of you were shocked. You know, you're like, whoa. I'm like, I know. Um, there's just so much demand here. And the demand is just, it's just stratospheric. I don't even know how they can even maintain it. So like, you know, but like I said, Balenciaga, Dior, Chanel, um, Hermes, you know, I feel like those are the brands. If they came here today, they'd be successful. And I'll add in Saint Laurent as well. Cause I feel like the Saint Laurent brand is still very strong as YSL though. It would re they really, they really have to come here as Yves Saint Laurent though. So I feel like there's more name recognition for you Saint Laurent, but um, yeah, let me just quickly just show you guys, give you a spin. This is like the center. Bulgari is up there, Louis Vuitton's up there, Cartier is up there. Um, as I told you, I said, I opted not to do luxury vlogs this time. Um, it was just too stressful. Um, there's so much security, everyone's staring. So people get told off for vlogging and that really put me off. So I was just like, okay, I'm done. So yeah, um, I'm meeting up with Edwin, I think in an hour and a bit, I'm gonna go get some food. They have McDonald's here, don't have McDonald's <laughs> in Tanzania. So I'm gonna go, I think, um, I was just walking so I could just walk and talk and not look insane. Cause I, I've noticed that if you walk and talk, people think you're on the phone and then they don't stare. Whereas if you stand and talk, you actually look insane. You look barking mad. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna go to McDonald's. Um, I was gonna buy that Dior powder. I decided to go and get the MAC powder because I'm more familiar with it. But now I'm thinking maybe I'll just go get the Dior powder as well. That way I have two options. So when the MAC powder finishes, I'm not like, oh, the MAC powder's finished. So I think I might go and get the Dior powder even though I just got the MAC powder. I might go and get it, I'm not sure. Just thinking. So now I'm gonna go get something to eat and yeah just kind of think about my shopping experiences here because we'll chat about that in my get ready with me so these are the videos you can expect to see after you see this video which is the johannesburg vlog you will see my um swarovski crystal unboxing and then you'll see my dual beauty unboxing and then we'll have a super chatty get ready with me so if you have questions you want to send me and stuff DM them to me and we'll chat about it. We can talk about Africa, we'll talk about African luxury market. We'll talk about the African luxury market, might get ready with me. 
the things I've learned, the market, um, but there's no doubt in my mind that the, the top three brands in this market, the top two brands, I beg your pardon, is really Louis Vuitton and Gucci. I mean, I have seen so many Dionysuses here. I've seen so many multi pochette accessoires. Um, I haven't seen the Dauphine, interestingly enough, but I've seen a lot of people carrying the multi pochette accessoire and the Capucine, the twist, Louis Vuitton and Gucci. Gucci is that chick. I don't want to hear any of you talking about big Gucci because she's got people here who love her and I love her too as well. So I'm looking forward to coming back here. So now I'm going to go get food and I will talk to you later. Hey, it's me again. If you're wondering where my shopping is, um, I met up with Edwin. We're about to head out, but he wanted to go to Starbucks. I decided I'm going to go back to Dior and get the foundation because it's such a headache getting that makeup in Tanzania and Mac can never have my color. Um, so I got that Mac one. Let me just get the Dior one and I can give you guys a proper review. Um, while I've been walking around, oh God, I love this Dior makeup. I love how it looks on me. It's really settled in. It looks so good. Oh God, love it. Um, while I've been walking around, um, I was thinking about things we're going to talk about in my get ready with me about the African luxury market. I saw, like like I said, I've seen a lot of Gucci bags, um, you know, Louis Vuitton bags, but a lot of handmade bags. Like this is a handmade bag that Edwin bought for me from Zanzibar. Like African culture is very much about stuff that's handmade. Um, by the way, this is the entrance to Santin City, but from the road. I don't know if you can see it here. Look, Zendaya, um, it's over there, if you can see it. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to quickly chat to you. I think you should be able to see Dior behind me. But I don't think I'll be able to vlog in there like this. Um, so I really feel like it's like, for, in terms of Big H, it'll be bags like the Picotin, and the Evelyn. I feel like those bags are priced quite well, um, even with bait. And I'm super curious, like, I was thinking about this the other day, like, how would they do bait here? I feel like it would have to be done like the way it's done in Asia. Like, people know how much they need to spend to qualify. I feel like here, if you say it as, like, you have to qualify for a bag, people here can accept that. But if you start, you know, one person spends a pound, gets a bag, the other person spends 10,000 pounds, that's not going to work here, boo boo sweetheart because she'll close the boutique that day she'll put her ponytail in her suitcase and she will fly back to paris sweetheart so yeah something like that the picotin the evelyn the the kelly pochette the mini kelly the bags that are maybe priced under five thousand euros i feel like that that, that market here is here and people would buy those bags i feel like that would be like the number for Chanel, similarly priced, anything below 5,000 euros. I know Chanel just had an increase as well, um, but I think it would have to be something like that. People will buy that, and I can see that from when I went to Louis Vuitton and Gucci, like, you know, absolutely rammed, and people are buying bags, and people are buying leather, so there is a market. And shoes, shoes are massive here. Um, that's why Ferragamo's here. Um, I think any brand that has, like, a strong shoe, like Heritage, would do well here. So, yeah, anyway, heading into Dior now to get my um to get my foundation um so i'll unbox that on the weekend um i have a lot of comments but i really like the service at dior um the service at mac wasn't great the service at swarovski was not good either but the service at dior beauty has been pretty good so happy about that i feel like god wants me to like dior again because i'm loving the exotics right now i'd love to get like a lizard mini lady dior in paris um i'm loving the saddle so yeah maybe i'm meant to be back at dior now <laughs> okay, I left Dior. I had to start my vlog again because I was vlogging and the man walking off in the distance there is a security guard. <laughs> he was in my vlog. And then I it kind of startled me. I thought he was going to shout at me. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry, I was in your video. Is that a TikTok or something? I was like, no, it's not a TikTok. But <laughs> it's kind of like a TikTok. He was actually quite nice. I thought I was going to get told off. I'm amazed I haven't gotten told off because um, I've been seeing people being dragged for vlogging. So that's good. Um, okay, so I left Dior, bought foundation. I have the Dior um, shopping bag with me here. It's obviously on my hand that's holding the phone. Also tried some of the nail varnishes. Obviously I'm wearing press-on, so I put them on this card. I'll post this in the group for those who are interested. Make sure you join it. Um, now I'm going to go find my husband. I think he's here in this bookshop. Um, so yeah, 
great shopping day. I think tomorrow we're going to the Mall of Africa. I will film that, I think, as a separate shopping um, vlog because that one is not luxury. There are no luxury brands there at all. So there's no Dior Beauty, no Chanel Beauty, but it's the largest shopping center in Africa. So I still feel like it's worth you guys seeing. However, I can't guarantee that I will vlog there because I don't know if we're really going. We might go, we might not go. If you see the vlog, great. If you don't, oh well, you know, because um, I still feel like it's worth me showing you just in case you're interested. Um, I still feel like it's worth me showing you. So, yeah, happy days today. Dual beauty, um, lots of other shopping done. So, yeah, really happy with the things that I scored. I'll be back here um, to buy other things very soon, I think, because I just love the shopping here. You can easily, like, she, she I came back. I don't think she thought I'd come back. I was like, I just want to see another one. She, she, put, the, she put lip glow on my lips because <laughs> I was like, Oh, is that lip glow? I was like, well, how much is that? Because I'm, I'm sorry, I don't care. I will ask how much everything is in the shop. You guys, you know me. I will ask people, how much did you buy, spend, like, to get that Birkin or that Kelly? You know that I do not care. I will ask. I was like, well, how much is that? How much is that? And she, she's like, okay, do you want to try? Do you want to try? Like, they know how to sell honey in the jewelry boutique. Like, they're constantly, constantly asking you, do you want to try this? Do you want to try that? Like, I'm leaving. And she's like, do you want to try the perfume? Do you want to try? She's like, do you want to buy it? Do you want to buy it? But it's not, it wasn't pushy. I can't explain it. It was like just not pushy, if that makes sense. Um, anyway, I'm going to go find Edwin and head back to the hotel. So I'll chat to you later when we get back to the hotel. Okay, you guys. So this is the epilogue, as it were, of my Johannesburg vlog. So I won't be filming anything beyond this point. I'm sorry, my press and mail fell off when we were in the lift and I think the housekeeper accidentally threw away the glue to my press on nails because I couldn't find it so sorry about that I was gonna do it back but then I was exhausted and I wanted to do like a skincare mask um so I was like the glamazons will forgive me um before I start does anyone like R&B music um, because I've gone on holiday, did anyone hear about the, like, Irv Gotti interview on Revolt TV about Shanti? If you like R&B, I have her first album, her first and second album um, on CD. And, yeah, I really, really like her music. I can't believe he spoke about her that way. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with luxury. But anyone who likes R&B or has watched that interview, drop a comment below and tell me what you think, because it's completely insane. Okay, so yeah, um, Edwin's popped out, so I thought I would just chat, come on camera and chat with you guys about the trip. Um, it was two years previously before coming to Johannesburg, and now I'm back in um, Johannesburg, and it's so great to be here, and it's just been really, really great to be here, and my life has changed so much since those two years ago. Um, when we came, um, it's just crazy, like how life changes and how things um, keep evolving and growing and things like that. So I definitely want to be coming here as often as I can. One thing, one thing I realized about shopping here in terms of luxury and just regular high street shopping is how much choice is here. In Tanzania, there's not a lot of choice in terms of like international brands. You have to really rely on online shopping or traveling. Here, it's like everything is here. You know, I've bought, for example, just this is just a silly example. This is something that I bought that I can't find in Dar es Salaam. Like, I have to um, order it. And I'm, again, sorry about lighting. I just don't have a ring light. And it's this thing called the ISO Plus Spritz Designing and Holding Spray. So I use this for styles, for wigs, for weaves. And I found it in the wig shop. <laughs> You know, I also found it in the local pharmacy. I know it sounds really silly, but I would have had to have ordered this. Um, and, you know, here we go. And it's just here. So something that I realized, I think, is like, I'm definitely a fan of like working hard, playing hard, and then spending my money and blowing the budget here. Um, I think it's much more convenient to shop here. So I think you're going to be seeing more trips where I come to Johannesburg um, to shop and buy things. I feel like that's definitely much more my speed. I think I'd mentioned it before, but you know, there's no like pressure in terms of trying to get a visa and applying for a visa and all the rest of it because Tanzanians don't need a visa to enter South Africa. Um, so that's fantastic. There are no C-19 mandates. You don't have to wear a mask. Um, you don't need to be inoculated. I am inoculated, by the way, but you don't have to. 
Um, you don't you, you don't have to show it basically. Um, but but by the way, if you're flying from Tanzania, you have to show it if that makes sense. But yeah, so I think it's just been very refreshing to be here in terms of shopping because obviously my channel's a luxury shopping channel, so we're going to talk about luxury shopping mainly. But it's been super refreshing. There is so much choice here from beauty, skincare, um, luxury fashion, leather, watches. I mean, the watch brands are coming for everyone's wigs here. I mean, Patek Philippe and Panerai and Jaeger Lecoutre and Rolex, they all have ADs here. I mean, it's completely insane. I feel like the fashion houses are like, honey, you need to, you need to wake up, boo-boo. Where are Fendi? Hermes, um, Chanel, Balenciaga, because it's lit here. It is absolutely insane. But I think, as I said previously on early on in the, in the day, I actually, I think the brands that I can now literally see opening a fashion boutique is probably Chanel and Dior. I feel like they're the most likely ones. And maybe Chanel is next because they do have the Metier Dar show coming and they have a beauty boutique here that's company run. And they ha and Dior also have their um, boutique. And it was so fascinating like chatting to the dual BTSA today, she was super professional and really about her money. You know, she was trying to sell me everything. And I love that. I love going to a store and the essay is very focused on doing their job and selling you things that they think that you might like. It's business, okay? It's business. It's not a friendship, it's business. And I'm not mad at it. Um, and she was, I was asking her, I was like, you know, how's the boutique doing? And she's like, it's doing really well. It opened last year. So Dior, as, as in Dior, you know, the French house opened the beauty boutique last year, but previously there were concessions in department stores. And that's what I remembered. So the beauty boutique is very immersive. It's, it feels very dual. You really do feel like you're in Paris. Um, they've got perfumes and they've got some of the dual skincare and they have a lot of the dual makeup and the color cosmetics as well. She said, you know, they can barely keep things in stock. There are a few like lip glosses I was interested in. She's like, oh, it's out of stock. It's sold out. She also, she also told me that essentially the Paris team will send stock to the Dior team in the UAE and then they will forward the stock to Africa and obviously being the South African Dior boutique. So that was fascinating just to just figure out the business logistics of that. I thought that was super interesting, like for me as a businesswoman, just figuring out the way the way Paris is trying to like kind of figure out how they can reach African consumers. I think one of the biggest issues that French brands have, and this is what I think after being here might be what's kind of stopping other French houses from coming here. I think if you're someone who, sorry, this is noise outside. I think if, if you're someone who pays attention to um, what's going on geopolitically in West Africa when it pertains to France and the French army, there's there are all kinds of things going on at the moment. There's this region called the Sahel. Google the Sahel conflict. There's something going on there and the French army is involved. So there are a lot of geopolitical things that are kind of percolating at the moment pertaining to France within the African continent. I do think that French luxury houses may be worried about the optics of opening a luxury boutique with really expensive leather goods ready to wear um, and products um, in a continent where the French army um, is involved in something that is going on in the Sahel. I don't really want to talk about it because um, you can get like your video suppressed. And also um, this isn't a politics, geopolitics channel. I'm very, I know what's going on there. I'm very well versed in that stuff, but that's not really what this page is about. Um, you know, just, you have to go and Google it. Don't ask me because it will take me forever to explain it. Um, you have to go and Google it and read it. But I think that French houses may feel a little bit nervous about the optics because there are a lot of Italian brands here. There's Ferragamo, there's Versace, there's Gucci, and there's Dolce & Gabbana. I mean, you know, they're doing well, you know, they've got clients and people shopping there and all those brands are doing well. So I think that is a possibility, maybe why Big H and Big C may be a little bit reluctant to kind of figure out how do you enter the African market and be respectful? On the other hand, they might not care, and that's fine. To be honest, when I was walking around the Diamond Walk all, all these past few days, um, I just realized like almost how irrelevant it is for Big H and Big C. I mean, if Big H and Big C come, great. If they don't come, honey, no one cares because Louis Vuitton's there, Ferragamo's there, Cartier's there, 
Bulgari, Patek Philippe, okay, Gucci, Dolce & Gabbana, Alexander McQueen, Versace, like, Moschino also are here, but they're in this, like, boutique that is, I think, has the license to sell Moschino in South Africa, honey. I was like, my girl, big Moschino is here? Like, I mean, it's it's almost, if that makes sense, like, it's almost irrelevant for Big H and Big C, like, to, to the market here. It's like, if you want to come, cool. You know, but if you don't want to come, like, people are not going to lose any sleep over it. So I think that there might be an issue with optics. They might be worried about optics. Some of you were saying, I remember one of you told me privately, like, um, do I think Big H is worried because they're worried that they're, that people, that they're worried about selling really expensive leather goods or something. I was like, no, I mean, my God, people are buying Louis Vuitton bags, hand over fist here. People are buying Gucci exotics. If you're a member of the group or you follow me on Instagram, they were like Gucci ostrich Dianas. People are buying them. <laughs> like, if no one was buying them, they wouldn't be on display. Big facts okay because this is a business this isn't like a unicorn story of guys my sa loves me i'm a big h unicorn and all the rest of it it's, it's not that at all so we're going to chat about it more so this is what i want you to do if you're watching this video i'm going to do a chatty get ready with me i think on sunday um where i'll use all of the new products that i've purchased and the new dior makeup uh, that i got because i bought stuff from dior beauty so you're going to see all of that um so ask me questions for the chat to get ready with me put like get ready with me or for the q a or put q a in the comments below and we'll and you can ask me anything ask me about like the african luxury market ask me about johannesburg ask me about Hermes, Chanel, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, whatever, you know, ask me those questions. Um, and as long as they're like relevant to the topics I've just mentioned, I'll answer them. Okay. But because the market here is crazy, like the demand is crazy. So I, I was thinking that essentially Dior and Chanel have opened these beauty boutiques to see if there's a demand for their brand. Like is the brand name strong enough to sell fashion products because we all know that f selling fashion honey is all about the brand and we all know that i think that's why they're here I, honestly the whole time i was like wow big hate but the whole time i should have been looking at dior honey okay avenue Monta dior avenue montaigne sweetheart she's not playing she's not playing she's not the one and what a coincidence i'm now back at dior i'm loving the brand again Kind of re, re remembering why I always used to like Dior, remembering also why I dragged Dior, but remembering why I like them as well. So um yeah, I mean it's just been such an interesting eye opening thing even for me. I feel like I understand a lot about the African luxury market. Um, I think this is a market driven by brands. I feel like Chanel and Dior's brand is probably stronger than Big H's brand realistically in terms of brand recognition i feel like you have brands like chanel dior balenciaga i think those are the three brands here here the african continent 54 countries you know what i'm saying but let's talk about sub-saharan africa i feel like those three brands and i'll include ysl are probably very strong in terms of name recognition like you could go to the democratic republic of congo and you talk to a bunch of people who like fashion you say balenciaga they're going to know balenciaga they're going to know Chanel, of course. They're going to know Dior. Um, will they know Hermes? Maybe. And they, there will be people who do. But I feel like Chanel and Dior's brand, like the megawatt brand value is probably stronger on the African continent. Um, but that's not to say that Big H couldn't make it happen. Who knows? Let's see what happens. But after now spending a few days here, it's very clear to me that I think in the next year or two, if there's ever going to be a luxury fashion brand, it will either be Chanel to open a fashion boutique because they have the beauty one, but it'll be Chanel, Dior, Yves Saint Laurent, or Balenciaga. I feel like those are the four that have that brand value. People know who they are because you can't be like, oh, I'm going to open a brand here. No one knows who you are. Even if you're, you know, you're late, you know, um it, wherever you are people don't know who you are no one's coming people know who, versace people know dolce and gabbana people know ferragamo and bulgari and cartier people know those brands so that's why they're here 
so yeah, it's been super fascinating just to see the demand. I saw crazy queues at Gucci, saw queues at Louis Vuitton. It was great because I was like, whoa, other African people like me who love luxury. So it was really, really exciting. So anyway, I just wanted to just kind of wrap it up and chat to you guys. Um, I, oh, I had a shout out. So all of my beautiful deal makeup is gone. I'm so glad that I went back to Dior today. I bought a bunch of things. So you have to make sure you watch my unboxings. Let me tell you what unboxings I have coming up because I don't, like I know I'll get people asking me, what did you get? What did you get? So so that you don't ask me, you're going to see a Swarovski crystal unboxing and then you're going to see my dual beauty unboxing and then we're going to do my chatty get ready with me. And then next week we'll just go back to normal um, because it's like a work week and I have so much work to do because obviously I've been on holiday and all of this. So I'll be still doing like two videos, I think from like next week, but I have a bunch of videos coming up now because I want to just kind of finish the week with like a bunch of videos for you guys. So I hope that you guys will be enjoying that um yeah it's just been it's just been so much fun i just i'd love to know what you guys think and I forgot to ask people to subscribe and hit notifications please subscribe and hit notifications let me know if you want to like what type of content you want to see on my channel honestly i really don't like it when youtubers like I don't like it when YouTubers kind of go away from the point of their channel. Like this is a luxury shopping channel, but I do think that this, I do think that this vlog was important. Like it was important for me to show you the apartheid museum. It was important for me to show you Gold Reef City and to kind of show you like the helicopter ride. So you guys can really see like a beautiful, vibrant African city. Everyone has these assumptions about Africa. People have no idea the wealth that is on this continent. Like, I know so many people who watch this channel. I know people in my private life who 100% could go to Big H FSH today and spend 100K in one go. <laughs> like, I know those people. So there are people like that here and there are many of them, but people are just very private and very shy. It's just a different culture. Like our culture is quite private. My video is in English, but I speak Swahili. I'm pretty sure if I did this video in Swahili, I'd be dragged, you know, but this channel is an English channel. So no one seems to really care for now. Anyway, ask me questions for the Q&A that's coming. Make sure you're fully subscribed. I really hope you liked this Johannesburg vlog. Give me your thoughts on the vlog. Tell me how you think it worked. In the chat to get ready with me, I'll also answer your questions because I did an Instagram sticker um, about like <laughs> annoying things luxury influencers do. So things that I, I want to make sure that I don't do them as well. So make sure that you, yeah, stick around if you ask me something in the sticker because I'll answer it on the get ready with me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in Tanzania in my next video.